is this that I feel deep inside and it keeps setting my soul on fire whatever it is whatever it is And strange what is this it makes me want to run on in Jesus name whatever it is whatever it is Walk with me. 
But now I hear the call to abandon. My 
good. God is good. And he's given me something special today. Something, something different that he's asked me to do. For months, I've had a message and I've been studying some things out that I just knew were in preparation for the next time that I got asked to preach. And he said, no, not this time. No, not this year. I have something else. So I don't think that I'm going to be long-winded today. I'm going to do exactly what he asked me to do and be obedient to him. As we close out 2020, we're just 40-some days away from closing out this year. And chances are I won't preach again in, in 2020. So the atmosphere is exactly the way that he told me that it was going to be in here today. The praise team, the, the music, and I just feel that desire amongst my brothers and sisters to, to rise up where he is because we don't have a choice for healing and to be restored and the things that we just thanked him for and that we're asking for and that we're worshiping him for is to rise up where he is because the world... The world doesn't have the set of instructions that we need today. God has the set of instructions. So I have a reminder. I have a call to action. So I'm going to go ahead and get to that. Thank you. Thank you, church family. Thank you, pastor, my leaders. God, I thank you. God, I thank you that you're faithful. I thank you that you've been faithful every single time that I stand behind this pulpit, God. Every single time that you're faithful, God, God, I stand in obedience of what it is that you've asked me to do today, knowing that I can't do any of it without your anointing, God. I need your anointing right now, God, to put the words in my mouth, God, and to open the ears of the hearer, God, and the hearts, God. Oh, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. What a year it has been so far. What a year it has been. Like I said, we've only got just over 40 days to, to carry the secret power vision. We're going to talk about the vision of 2020 today. That's odd. The year is closing up. Typically, I would be looking forward to what's next. I would already be thinking he would already be dropping clues about what's coming in January. I haven't heard any clues at all about what's coming in January because 2020 is not over And we need every single bit of the secret power that we've stored up and learned about this year, those that have, to get us to the finish line. That's what he said. So that's what I'm telling you. This is an unprecedented year. If we had a word of the year, that would be the word. Unprecedented. Unprecedented year. 2020, the secret power year. That's what I'm going to talk about. Times like never before, the world, it is, it's surrounded us. It's surrounded us even in the last few days within our very own church family. We're surrounded with uncertainty, with fear, confusion. There are, no, there are those that we know, that we love, that aren't here with us today, that right now, right now, they're experiencing of a crisis of faith. Right now. Welcome, online viewers. But God, but God, what about God? Back at 2 Timothy 1, 7, please. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. So the fear... The confusion, the uncertainty, none of that comes from God. We have to hold on to him, to the spirit that he's put within us, with everything that we have, with everything that we have. Yes, I'm holding on to God. Yes, I go to my secret place. Yes, I'm trying my best to walk in the spirit, but I still take my temperature. I still took my temperature. 
I had a moment there was like, am I going to have to go do this or not? My, it was way low. Like, there was no question. Like, you're 95 degrees. Get to church. <laughs> Amen. Seriously. We're in a place and faced with situations that it's the only way that we're able to overcome them is in the spirit. That's the only way. We have to stop looking to the world for answers. What are the symptoms? What are the new symptoms? How long do I have to have them? How long am I going to be exposed to them? And on and on and on, every single thing that's going on in the world, from pestilence to the government and so forth and so on. The world doesn't have our answers. It doesn't have our comfort. It doesn't have the strategies, and it doesn't have the instructions that we need. Now more than ever. Now, today, today, starting today, more than ever, we have to finish year, this year with Kingdom Gates 2020 vision. With secret power. Nobody's forgotten. Nobody in this place today has forgotten about the secret power that comes from the secret place because that's where it is and that's what it holds. And for those that are struggling, I know there are a couple people that are in here today that weren't with us in January. So welcome to the vision of 2020, Kathy and Xavier. <laughs> For those that are struggling and have an ear and haven't quite gotten to that secret place, we're going to help you do that today. We're going to go there. So for those that are struggling, those that need a reminder, and because that's what he's instructed us to do today, and for those that have an ear, I give you Psalms 91. God has shown me what he's going to do. So let's get started. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and thy buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the error that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eye shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation. There shall be no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear up with their hands, let thou... Dash thy foot against the stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder. The young lion and dragon shall trample under foot. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high, because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. That right there, that's all we need. 16 verses. 16 verses to finish. 16 verses to finish. The call to action is we have to do more than read them. We have to, I don't care if you've memorized them. It's not enough. It's not enough. There's something that we have to do. And some people needed to be reminded of that. And a couple of people kind of need to be walked through that. I'm not sure I'm quite there yet. I'm not sure I know exactly where my secret place is. So we're going to break it down just a little bit. So put down your pens, put down your notepads, put down your phones. Let's eliminate all of our distractions right now. Nate, can you help me by playing? Yes. 
is God has a word for each and every person that's here today. And I didn't know exactly who was going to be here. I knew a lot that weren't going to be here for sure because they text me and tell me about what's going on. But for everybody that's here and will receive what he has for you right now, God has something for you. Some power. Some secret power. Some secret power. I don't feel like it, but I got to get myself ready and get to church today. Somebody said, because I think he might have something for me. And he does. And it was worth everything to be here. So if you could just be comfortable, bow your heads as you will. Close your eyes as you're so moved. And about the secret place, your secret place, it's just you and God. He that dwelleth. That means we sit there. That means we sit quietly. We sit quietly in the secret place so that we can hear it's secret because it's private sometimes even covered and the most high that's the place we go up to where he is the most high nothing higher according to Abraham that's the possessor he's the possessor of the heaven and the earth there's nothing higher. Rise up to the highest place. And then we abide there. We're not just stopping in. You abide there. That means you tarry. That means however long it takes. However long it takes. Until every thought that's not of him is gone. Until every distraction is removed. Till it's just you and God, till your atmosphere changes to the higher place. And you remain under that shadow. That's the shadow of the Almighty. In numbers, they call it a defense. You'll feel the shadow of His wings. It's your refuge. It's your refuge. You can stay right there until calamity. In Jonah, the shadow delivered him from grief, not just physical. Everything that you have. So we dwell in the secret place of the Most High for as long as it takes, because He's your refuge, He's your fortress. Not just from rain, not just from storm, not just from sickness, not just from danger. You know, he's your refuge, even from falsehood. It's a secret place and secret power that protects us from the falsehoods of the world. It's in this place that he's going to deliver. He's going to deliver from the snare of the fowler, from the noisome pestilence that's everywhere. And it's in the secret place and the secret power that we need to overcome the noise of pestilence. Pestilence, that's whatever sickness there may be. Noisome is loud. Under his shadow, he can quiet the noisome pestilence. The closer it is, the louder it is. It's a distant conversation. It's not so loud. If your neighbor is dying of pestilence, it's a little bit louder because it's a little bit closer. But it's his shadow. It's his secret place and his secret power that can take care of you and calm that no matter what. He'll cover you with his wings, his feathers. His truth is our shield and our buckler. That means he covers, covers you. He's blocking. 
He's overshadowing. He's shutting off. And he can stop the approach right now. The secret power from the secret place can stop the approach of the enemy and his truth, his faithfulness, and his divine instruction. That's what shields us from the enemy. That's what shields us from the world. In 18, we read that the wicked will have their reward. We'll see the reward of the wicked. For those that don't know, here it means retribution, guys. It's retribution. And the promises, the promises that we can read and that we can memorize are for those that make the Lord in this high place, in this secret power, your habitation. These promises are for you, but you must dwell with the Most High. You must dwell here. I love it that it's written on bathroom mirrors. I love it that it's hanging on living room walls. But we have to dwell here. We spend time here. Abiding in the shadow. Abiding in the shadow of the Almighty. God, we thank you. We thank you, God, for choosing us. I thank you for choosing me, an unsuspecting preacher, an unsuspecting group of people. abiding in this quiet secret place where the secret power is that it's a sure thing of your protection if we raise up where you are God thank you for giving us that opportunity to do that today and from there from there church, continue into the the other seasons and the things that we know how to do and the things that we know how to do well with the secret power. Yes, we need to battle. Yes, we need to scream. We need to trample. We need to shout. But we need the secret power to be able to continue to do that because it wears day after day. We got to bring down the secret power from the secret place so that we can continue so that we can continue and stand I'd love to say it's almost over well it is because he's coming back it is because he's coming back but for the rest of 2020 for the rest of 2020 and what's coming next in the next 40 some days the secret place is going to be required. It's going to be required. I'm thankful today that we have a place to come and a place to worship where his presence dwells. God, I thank you for this word that you've given me today. God, I ask that you would speak to the hearts of those that are listening. Lord, that you would speak through me as I am just a vessel, God. Let your word go forth to those that hear God, not only to just listen and and take it with them, but God, let it affect us as we go from this place. And let it touch our family members that are homesick, God, as they watch it online. In Jesus' name, amen. 
the message that God has given me today is a big message that I thought was big for a little amount of people. <laughs> so I hope everybody did your spiritual push-ups because you get to carry it out the door. <laughs> the weight of uh, the message that God has given me, the title of it is The Weight of Peculiarity. In times past, we've defined the word peculiar as something as negative. It's come with negative connotations. Like it's been defined as, oh, that's weird or that's off or odd. But I've come to share with you today that the word of God defines peculiar as something completely different. And so I'd like to bring up my first passage, which everybody comes to, which comes to everybody's mind when you say the word peculiar. is 1 Peter 2 and 9. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. I want to stop at that semicolon right there and break down what this means because it's very weighty. Many preachers have gone over this passage before and have just assumed that it applies to them. I've heard many preachers go and say, turn to your neighbor and say, you're a peculiar people, <laughs> making light of this passage. But this passage is important. The author Peter starts the statement saying, you are a chosen generation. He starts it very, very broad. There's a lot of generations that have passed since this passage has been written. And there's a lot of generations that have thought they were the chosen generation. So if you break down those two words in the Greek, the word chosen generation means an elect nation or an aggregate of many individuals of the same nature. I'm looking at a whole bunch of Holy Ghost filled eunuchs today that are part of the eunuch nation. Ye are a chosen generation and royal priesthood. Royal in the Greek is basileos. You can write that down. <laughs> Royal means kingly in nature. There's a lot of people going around in this world that claim to be Christians that are not walking around kingly in nature. They're going around saying whatever they want, doing whatever they want, consuming whatever they want, and saying that this scripture verse pertains to them. Peter narrows it down even further. He says, a holy nation. And those two words put together means a consecrated people. Not many people in the church body have consecrated themselves. 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and 17 says to come out from among them and be separate. There's supposed to be a distinct, visible difference between us and the world. That word separate in the Greek means to be a divide. To mean uh, to be completely separate. There's, there's not supposed to be muddied when you say you're a Christian. Oh, you're a Christian? Really? I don't believe you. I just know where you were last night. I know what you were posting on social media. I know what you were saying to these people. I know the language that you use. What do you mean you're a Christian? A chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, and he takes it down a little bit further where he says a peculiar people. The word peculiar in the Greek is pedioposis, hallelujah. <laughs> Say that three times fast. Pedioposis. <laughs> and that word in the Greek means preservation. And obtaining, purchased, possession, saving. It doesn't mean something's weird or different. However, I go to a church where everybody is a little bit weird and a little bit different and a little bit odd compared to everybody else. We stick out like a sore thumb. If you look at the way the world's going and the rest of the church is following right after it, but this group of people is peculiar. We're going completely in an opposite direction as everybody else is going. How in the world can Pastor and Mother Morgan come to church after they've lost countless family members? How are they here in their places today to serve God and to serve all of you? That's weird. That's peculiar. How is Chris here every Sunday in his place ready to go when he's got all his stuff going on? But that's weird. How is KPC here? Everybody here every Sunday worshiping God with everything that they have. All their guts are out. They're doing everything in the year of 2020 is nothing but a dumpster fire. How are they doing that? That's peculiar. The rest of the verse continues and says that ye should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his 
marvelous light. I'm going to say right now that if you're showing forth praises of somebody else other than Jesus Christ, this scripture does not pertain to you. If you're showing forth the praises of your spouse or a celebrity or a family member or somebody in political power, if you're showing forth their praises other than God's, this verse does not pertain to you. Let's go on to the next verse. He describes who these peculiar preserved people are. He says, in which time past were not a people, but are now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. These people have, what pastor likes to say, has pushed through solid rock. And I believe that these people are continuing to push through solid rock because they are getting side eye from the rest of the church. What do you mean you guys are still getting together? There's a pandemic going on. What do you mean you're singing praises? What do you mean you're not coming? Coming together without wearing masks. Well, let me tell you, we just heard this verse earlier. Psalms 91 verse 1. Here's what it says. It says, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. No, we don't have to worry about COVID in the cleft of the rock, in his presence, in that secret place. No, we don't have to worry about that. We're a peculiar people. We're a preserved people. You are an elect nation, a kingly priesthood, a consecrated nation, a preserved people. We're going the opposite direction as the world is, as opposite direction is what the church is. I'm not settling for a service on a lit up screen. I'm not settling for a service where it's just face value. This church is going deeper. This church is going farther. The weight of peculiarity is special and it rests upon our shoulders today. I'm reminded about a story in Genesis chapter 19. I know a lot of us are Unfortunately, super familiar with that chapter because it's been beat over our heads before. But there's an instance where the angels of the Lord came to visit Lot and his family. And they said, you need to leave. This place is about to be destroyed for their wickedness. And it says actually in Genesis chapter 19 verse 15, it says they lingered. They lingered for a minute, but by the grace of God, the angels snatched up the hands of Lot and his family and took them. And they said, run for your lives. Leave the wickedness. Leave everything else aside and don't look back. Don't look back. Now, a lot of people have taken this passage and they've uh, associated it with Lot's wife's decision to look back as looking back into her past. I don't think that's 100% the case. I think it's because Lot and his family had lived there for so long They had developed relationships with these people. They loved these people. They'd spent time with them. They probably had them in their homes. They've served them dinner. I believe that when she looked back, she was caring about those people that she's left behind. And church, I've come to tell you today, it's weighty to think about, but this weight of peculiarity that we carry, we don't have time to look back at the people that we're leaving behind. We don't get to look back at the wickedness because the judgment is coming on them. We're running from our lives from that judgment and that wickedness. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 61 and verse 3. It says, to appoint unto them that mourn unto Zion. This is a a prophecy about Jesus as he's about to, uh, about him being born. To give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord. In this scripture, we see a trade that's happening. We have to give up our ashes for the beauty. We have to give up our mourning for that oil of joy. A lot of people in the church just want to hang on to the misery. They just want to hang on to it and protect it and keep it safe. But there's a trade that's happening. I've come to tell you today that the weight of peculiarity that we carry weighs far less than the weight of the world. There's a trade. We have to give something up in order to receive something. Matthew chapter 11 verse 28. I brought this passage up last month when I was preaching and Jesus is talking. He says, come unto me all ye that labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest. Verse 29 says, and take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lonely in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. 
for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. This weight of peculiarity that we're called to, to bear is easy and it's light compared to the weight of the world. I mean, sometimes this weight of peculiarity may be difficult to choose sometimes. Sometimes we have to turn away from people and family members. I know it's horrible, but it weighs way less than the weight of the world. Lately, I've been liking the, the book of, of Deuteronomy because it's, it's got these little nuggets that just get you right in the spirit. So I want to look at Deuteronomy chapter 7, verses 6 and 7. For thou art a holy people unto the Lord God, thy God. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto him. Special people above all the people that are on the face of the earth. He chose us to be special, but wait till verse 7, it gets better. It gets better. It says, for the Lord did not set his love upon you, nor choose you, because you were more in number than any people. For you were the fewest of all people. These people are small in number that bear this weight of peculiarity. These people, this is a tiny, tiny group that have chosen to separate themselves, to put a visible divide between them and the world and what everybody else thinks and what everybody else cares about. This small group of people chooses the weight of peculiarity over the weight of the world. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 4. Nate, would you come? According as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, before he even uttered the words, let there be light, we were chosen. We were chosen to bear this weight before that even took place that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. This weight that God has given us is something special and it's not something that we should take advantage of. It's something that we should treasure and protect because we've learned that it is so easy to just step over the line into wickedness. It's so easy. It's scary how ridiculously easy it is. It's why every day we have to ask God, see if there be any wicked way in me. Every day. I'd like to take us to one more passage that shows us what this peculiarity looks like. What it, what it looks like on us. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, starting in verse 5. For ye are children of the light and children of the day. We are not of the night nor of the darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as others do, but let us watch and be sober. He's not talking about these people that are taking a nap. He's talking about these people that are distracted with everything else going on. They're more worried about political candidates. They're more worried about debates. They're more worried about all the divides that are going on. They're not looking and watching and being sober. The next verse says, for that they, that, uh, for that they sleep sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunk in the night. Verse 8. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love and for an helmet, the hope of salvation. And lastly in verse 9. For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. That word obtain in the Greek is pediopoiesis, which is the same word as preserved. It is not an accident that these chosen generation, this royal priesthood, holy nation, this peculiar preserved people is not appointed unto wrath. But they are to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. I want to ask all the peculiar people in this place to stand. The title of peculiar is not a negative term. It is a positive term that we should wait and protect. Because it is precious. Wear it with honor. Now don't be prideful about it. We've been warned to be careful about it. But it's something that we should treasure and hold on to and keep tight. And remember when everything else going around around the world is, is crazy and in our homes and in our family, everything's crazy. But we carry that weight of peculiarity that weighs way more than the weight of the world.